homeopathy, is it the biggest scam of all time or the only real medicine? There are bitter debates about it here in Germany. Homeopathic remedies are even available as a prescription from doctors or alternative practitioners. Several hundred million euros are spent on globules and the like in Germany alone. It's a big business. More than half of Germans have tried them. But skepticism from critics is growing. We delve into the history of homeopathy because it was actually invented in Germany. From here, it conquered many regions of the world. We get to the bottom of the biggest myths surrounding the practice, some of which are as old as homeopathy itself. The famous globules. These harmless little pellets are supposed to be the healers, or are they just sugar balls? The answer from a scientific point of view is pretty clear. Most of these globules are basically sugar. The effect of the white pellets is controversial. Let's take a look at the manufacturing process. It has hardly changed in the last 200 years. Homeopathy follows the principle of dilution. The more diluted, the better. A so-called mother tincture is created from a starting substance. It can even be based on poisonous plants, such as belladonna. And this basic substance is gradually diluted further and further. Homeopaths call this potentization. One part of the original tincture is attenuated by nine parts of a water-alcohol mixture, and this is shaken up thoroughly ten times by tapping the container against a firm base. Then, one part of this is taken and mixed with nine parts water and alcohol and shaken up, and so on and so forth. After a great deal of potentiating, the result is a bit like the proverbial drop in the ocean. It's virtually impossible to detect even a single molecule of the original tincture anymore. For 200 years, homeopaths have believed that the more diluted the substance, the greater the healing power. The shaking process is intended to charge the remedy with energy. To this day, this is still done by hand. In the final manufacturing step, the solution is dripped or sprayed onto the sugar globules. In Germany, for example, according to the EU directive, globules with a high diluted active ingredient do not have to be approved. They only need to be registered. No proof of efficacy is required for this. Sounds more like faith than science. This is exactly what is being criticized. And the regulations for homeopathic remedies are much less strict worldwide than for regular medicines. Different people manufacture homeopathic formulation differently and it just floods the market. Somebody who is lucky enough may just end up with simple sugar only as part of treatment. But somebody who is unlucky can actually get a poorly prepared sugar formulation which may have some active ingredient that can be harmful. In a country like Germany, known for its love of rules, regulations seem to be less important in the practice of homeopathy. How did this come about? Let's go back to the very beginning. The founder of homeopathy is a German doctor, Samuel Hahnemann. He was born in Meissen in 1755 and studied medicine in Leipzig. After his studies, he struggled to earn enough money for himself and his family and worked mainly as a writer and translator. And he made himself unpopular with his colleagues with hurtful diatribes and insults. Some of his anger was directed at what he saw as the brutality of the medicine practiced in the 18th century. Methods such as bloodletting were common. Knowledge of the human body was limited. Toxic substances such as arsenic and mercury were administered in large quantities. The treatments often did more harm than good. The world is ready for gentler alternatives, and Samuel Hahnemann seems to have found them. His aha moment came when he read about cinchona bark as a remedy for malaria. Hahnemann dared to try it himself, taking the bark and actually developing malaria-like symptoms. He then developed the so-called principle of similars, which homeopaths still adhere to today. Basically what they claim is that if a substance produces a particular disease symptom in a person, the same substance given in a very ultra diluted form can actually cure the same disease in the person. That is what the basic major principle of homeopathy is, like cures like, which has no scientific explanation to it. It's basically magical thinking. And that brings us directly to the next point. The bottom line is that homeopathy does not work beyond the placebo effect. The placebo accusation is as old as homeopathy itself. Even Hahnemann was called a quack by other doctors. But the conflict between conventional doctors and alternative healers ultimately leads to an advance in medical research. 
one of the earliest double-blind studies is carried out. This means that trial participants are randomly assigned to receive either homeopathic preparations or placebos. Neither the participants nor the researchers know who is getting which. The test results? Sobering. There is no reliable evidence for the effectiveness of homeopathic remedies. But if you firmly believe in the effect, you don't need any proof, of course. That was the case back then and is still the case nearly 200 years later. Nevertheless, patients swear that they feel better. And that really can be the case. In many studies, researchers attribute possible therapeutic success to the placebo effect. And then there is something else, the age-old mistrust of conventional medicine. The impersonal nature of large medical institutions can feel colder than alternative practitioners. But it's not more than that. It's not a specifically effective drug therapy, not medicine in the end, but rather something interpersonal, perhaps almost psychological. You feel you're in good hands. Someone takes time for you, takes you seriously as a person, as an individual. And yes, of course, that also has an effect that is incredibly important. But that alone is no substitute for really effective medicine. A persistent myth is that healed children and animals prove homeopathy's effectiveness. We found references to this argument in our archive. On this farm in northern Germany, veterinary surgeon Dr. Achim Schutter was called in to treat a cow by the name of Umbelina. All of a sudden, she had more or less stopped producing milk. After excluding any possibility of organic damage, the vet administered a homeopathic remedy. Just 12 hours later, the cow was producing just as much milk as before. There are such definite successes, and they occur so quickly after treatment, that I can only say they must have been brought about by the homeopathic remedy. They can't have been caused by anything else. The argument of homeopathy advocates is that animals and children don't even know how they are being treated, so they don't have expectations about treatments. So there must be more to it than just the placebo effect, right? It's also the case that children and animals often have a very, very good and well-functioning immune system where illnesses can flare up but then are quickly overcome. I see this in my children now too who sometimes lie around with a high temperature one day and jump around the next day super happy. I used to think, wow, of course it was because of the globules I gave them. And now I can see that it was either their immune system, their ability to heal themselves or the natural course of illness. Germany is the birthplace of homeopathy, but its recognition and integration into healthcare systems vary globally. In some countries, homeopathy is more widely accepted and even part of the national healthcare systems. Germany recognized the export potential of homeopathic medicines early on. Schwabe, for example, entered large-scale industrial production at the end of the 19th century and quickly developed into the world's leading company for homeopathic products. The products are exported to almost every country. India is currently the country with the highest number of homeopathic practitioners and users worldwide. Homeopathy was actually brought in from the West by the missionaries as part of uh, you know, the colonization and all that process that happened long, long back. Part of that process of colonization was a social and educational reform implemented by the British in 1835. It prioritized English language education and Western approaches over indigenous knowledge. This affected traditional medical systems like Ayurveda, a holistic practice more than 3,000 years old. British authorities considered Western medicine superior. And he also helped to push the popularity of homeopathy in India. The Maharaja is plagued by illnesses that are considered incurable at the time. Finally, he hires a European personal physician who experiments with homeopathic remedies. The Maharaja's seal of approval is of course good for the image of homeopathy. This is comparable to the situation in India today. Homeopathy actually thrives and survives here because it's, it's actually funded by the government. Uh, it's taught in government colleges and all. People feel that, you know, it's a it's a legit or a legitimate practice and uh, fall prey for it. Uh, the government themselves are to blame for uh, promoting such unscientific practices because they can't give proper medical education or medical care to the whole country in a in a, a systematic manner. I think this is the reason why homeopathy is very powerful and influential in, uh, in India. You'll actually see good hospitals in Delhi. You'll actually see good hospitals in Kerala. But you'll see that there are no good hospitals like that in Bihar or you know, Uttar Pradesh and things like and places like that. So in those gaps, these alternative medicine practitioners actually come in. Natural and gentle. 
the perfect alternative to regular medication, and above all, without the severe side effects. This has always been promised to homeopathy users. Homeopathy is not without side effects. You probably remember the beginning of this video. The active ingredient is extremely diluted. How harmful can that be? It seems to be relatively harmless, and in most cases, it is. But there are exceptions that should be mentioned. There are side effects of homeopathy where uh, people have developed sudden cardiac arrest, heart-related complications because it contains active herbs which can stop the heart. There are homeopathic formulations which has led to severe allergic reactions and anaphylaxis and patients have gone into shock. And even if you tolerate the medication well, there could be a bigger problem. Vielleicht you become familiar with homeopathy because of a cold or because of a headache or stomachache, especially in children. You think, oh, if I use this, it will go away. It probably would have gone away on its own or because the placebo effect made it easier to wait. But then you take it for more serious illnesses, perhaps for pneumonia or bacterial cystitis. But when you're dealing with cancer or severe depression, this is when it really gets critical. The many myths surrounding homeopathy are deeply rooted in history, and the debate over its effectiveness will continue. Do you believe in the healing power of homeopathy? Leave us a comment. And if you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel.